Hey, welcome to this presentation. My name is Dino, and I will be presenting You Can Run But You Can't Hide the Impact of Surveillance Technology in Schools. Uh, my uh, presentation will deal with the various five topics. First, uh, Jeremy Bentham's Panopticon Model for Effective Prisons. Two, Foucault's Panopticon Analysis Across Institutions. Three, George Orwell's Governmental Surveillance of Citizens. Four, Walter Kern's inversion of government surveillance to self-surveillance. And finally, five, surveillance implications for education. Let's begin with one, shall we? Uh, Jeremy Bentham's Panopticon model for effective prisons. Um, do you know what the origins and roots of the word panopticon are? It, it comes from the uh, Greek mythology from way in the past uh, panoptes was a giant with a thousand eyes and the reason he had a thousand eyes was that when he was tired and wanted to sleep some of his eyes could close but yet with so many he could still be awake so that made him the perfect watchman uh, from that what is a panopticon what did it become uh, actually as a concept uh, it's an institutional building as well as a system of control i'll talk about both of those things uh, throughout the presentation. Uh, the, the term is created by English philosopher and social theorist Jeremy Bentham in the late 18th century. And if you break the word down into pan and opticon, pan meaning all. For example, if you have an institution and there's inmates in it, it could be all of them. And opticon is can be observed. So all can be observed. Um, what is a panopticon in terms of prisons? Um, here's like a, a schematic on the left and sort of a, an illustration of being inside of one of these prisons on the right. Uh, the arrows point to the central watchtower in the middle. The blue arrows point to the, uh, the inmates who are in cells on the periphery. So again, on the left, you can see the watchman. That's the uh, N. And the various A's are, again, around there. On the right, you see... Um, in the distance, um, the watchtower where the watchman would be, and then in blue in the foreground is the, the penitent uh, inmate being observed. Um, again, maybe what is a panopticon in terms of prison specifically, and why are they useful and why are they effective according to uh, Bentham? Uh, it inmates, when they're within a panopticon and it's designed the way that Bentham wanted it to, they cannot tell if they're actually being watched because they're so far away and, and there's like small slits from the uh, watchtower. So it's kind of hard for the, if not hard, if not impossible for the cell inmate to be able to see them. So because of that, because the inmate can't tell that, the watchman appears to be able to observe all the cells at once. And so because of that, what, uh, what, Bentham wanted to, them to do is that they wanted the inmates to act like they're always being watched and this is this compels the inmate to constantly control their behavior because again they're being watched constantly here's actually a practical model of a uh, of a cell house in illinois again using the same colors and arrows from before the red arrow is a watch is the watchtower in the middle where the watchman would be and, all, and the blue is the periphery where all the cells are and all the various inmates. Not only has Panopticon been used in prisons, and it's been used around the world, this kind of model, but it's also been used in popular culture. For those of you who are into the Batman series and the Dark Knight, Lucius Fox, played by Morgan Freeman here. Um, he is the watchman, and there, he had a bit of an ethical problem with it during the movie. And then the blue are on the screen. So there's a like sonar that uh, is, is used. All of the audio, the microphones from the cell phones in Gotham are used to create this, this vision. It's technically Im Im impractical, if not impossible, but you know you get the point. That again, it's, it's not just a theoretical thing. It's not just a prison thing. It's also used in popular culture. Um, Let's talk about Michel Foucault's um, panopticon analysis across institutions. So this is important because it kind of broadens out what Bentham originally thought. Here's a quote. The panopticon must, must not be understood as a dream, dream building. It is the diagram of a mechanism of power reduced to its ideal form. And the ideal form would be 
the power would be in the watchtower. And it's kind of like that's the central node from which the power um, uh, emerges. Uh, here's a quote from uh, Discipline and Punish. Quote, at the center, this tower is pierced with wide windows that open onto the inner side of the ring. The peripheric building is divided into cells. All that is needed then is to place the supervisor in a central tower and to shut up in each cell a madman, a patient, a condemned man, a worker, or a schoolboy. So again, this is kind of like um, Foucault's extending the idea of the panopticon beyond just the prisoner. And here I sort of list out from that panopticon situations which are in italics and the subjects of surveillance. So the situation is a prison, the subject is condemned man. Situation is a sanatorium, the, the subject is a madman. Situation is hospital, the subject is a patient. Situation is workplace, the subject is a worker. Situation is a learning institution, and the subject is a schoolboy or schoolgirl. As a result, Panopticon has had a profound influence. It's a tool for surveilling prisoners. And that's what it originally was, but it's been reconceptualized more broadly, more pervasively across society. One place that's been used a lot is this idea is in George Orwell's governmental surveillance of citizens, like where he talks about that in one of his iconic books. Uh, and he talks about this in terms of his, his term, Big Brother, it's from his 1949 novel, 1984. Uh, the totalitarian leader of the book's fictional state is Big Brother, it leads an overly intrusive and controlling government, and people are watched and constantly controlled by Big Brother, and they're reminded uh, constantly the big brother is watching them here are two posters th that kind of refer to the, to the book very hitler-esque and stalin-esque depending on you know what your preferences preference are preferences are the book kind of frightening um f from orwell one of the things i think is most interesting is orwell inverts this government sale balance to becoming more of a self-surveillance. And he, terms, he deems the term little brother in contrast to big brother. He wrote uh, this article about big uh, little brother in the aftermath of Tyler Clementi's tragedy several years ago. Clementi was a Rutgers freshman whose sex life was surveilled by, by his roommate and sort of shown among some peers in a dormitory they all lived in. And Clementi, um, who just uh, came out as being gay, he later committed suicide, and it was an, just an awful tragedy. I'll read a couple quotes from the uh, article. It isn't some stern and monolithic big brother that we have to reckon with as we go about our daily lives. It's a vast cohort of prankish little brothers. So again, it's like he's contrasting, you know, I think most people are afraid of big brother or just the idea of it in terms of government and, and things like that. But I think he's, he, from the, the, the dawn of social media and the internet more broadly, he, he brings up the idea of little brother. Uh, maybe I'd make a quick uh, guess. What's the percentage of internet users that say they worry about how much information is available online about them? 33%, and this is according to P the Pew Research Center in 2010, so I imagine it's much higher today. Another quote, uh, the invasion of privacy of others' privacy, but also our own, as we turn our lenses on ourselves and the quest for our attention by any means has been democratized. And again, the, de the democratizing is through social media, through our cell phones, through these platforms. So my question for you, are you worried about your privacy invaded more by the government, corporations, or your, or your peers? There's not really a right answer for this. I think it depends on your context. If you're from an authoritarian regime, or you're just maybe a little bit more concerned about privacy, even in a democratic regime, regime you might say the government. If you're just generally worried about the power of major international corporations in this late capitalist society we have, corporations may be your choice or maybe if you're younger and your parents and your peers are looking at you all the time online and messing around with you then you might say your peers finally surveillance implication for education we are monitored constantly in a surveillance society i'm sure all of you thought about that at some time or other uh, schools are included increasingly places where students are watched by a variety of actors cctv cameras Really high percentage of U.S. high schools, 23.6, have CCTV cameras as of 2018. Computer and device use, um, you know, they can be used to, to track students. Security officers, there are 56.5% of uh, 
schools in the states have at least one security officer and 42.9 of sworn law enforcement officers that are in schools have have a firearm and then staff also patrolling schools for student malfeasance those are all just ways that students are being watched so from this i want you maybe to consider the extent surveillance technology impacts learning environments and the broader social control they exert finally some questions for you as you go on your go on your your daily way are schools examples of civil panopticons sort of extending what uh Foucault was saying is cctv video a benevolent panoptic tool to make things better at a school how about computers how about smartphones what about school security officers are they benevolent or benign or malign and finally from constant student surveillance are we promoting interstate surveillance between them such as the, the case of the tragic case of Tyler Clementi. That was You Can Run But You Can't Hide, The Impact of Surveillance Technology in Schools. Thanks for watching.